The topic for this video is Bresenham's line drawing algorithm. This is one of the important algorithm in computer graphics and this is very simple and easy algorithm. Now the topics that I have here to discuss in this video is basics that are required for understanding this algorithm. I'll discuss the basics then and next is drawback of DD algorithm. Already I have one video on the DD algorithm. So there are some drawbacks. So that is the reason we require Bresenham algorithm. A Bresenham algorithm is designed to avoid the drawbacks. So what are the drawbacks? We'll discuss that. Then problem with float. So that's the problem with the DDA. So why float is a problem? I will explain you that. Then derivation of Bresenham algorithm. So there's a lot of uh, mathematics involved for deriving Bresenham's algorithm that we will do. And then we will see the algorithm and then we will follow the algorithm and solve one problem. So these are the topics that I'm going to cover. And one more thing I have to say, I have two courses in Udemy, one on C++, learning C++ from beginners to the advanced level, beginners who have never done programming and to the advanced level that is useful for industry or cracking interviews. If you are a fresher, then you should take this course. You will get good grip in C++ programming. And one more thing, learning C++ is learning OOPS and the way OOPS is covered is more intuitive and it's very easy. You can easily understand OOPS and you can use it practically. So I suggest you take that course if you are learning C++. And one more course is in data structures using C and C++ and some algorithms are there that are related to data structures. So it's not data algorithms as a subject, just data structure along with that some uh, algorithms are also there. So it's a 50 hour score. So data structure is covered in more and more detail that is useful for academics as well as it is useful for cracking interviews as a fresher, right? For a job interview, mostly companies ask questions from basic core subjects and one of the subject is data structures and programming, they ask questions from OOPS. So I suggest you take up these courses and you prepare for your interviews and even they are useful for academics. Now let us start with the basics. First thing I will tell you about line. See, suppose this is our graphic system and this is the origin, this is x axis, this is y axis and any line in the system is represented with a formula that is y is equals to mx plus c where m is a slope of a line that is difference in y by difference in x dy by dx and x and y are the coordinates and c is y intercept at which point the line is intersecting with y axis so you should be knowing about this basic formula this difference in x and difference in y is suppose this is a line segment between these two points so the difference in this x values this is x1 and x2 and difference in y values this is y1 and y2 that differences are taken difference in x and difference in y so this is the line formula next based on the slope of this line if i draw them again once again here see if the line is going through this origin and it is having 45 degrees angle 45 degrees angle then the difference in x and the difference in y will be equal when they both are equal then it will be one so yes the slope of this line is one so if a line is of 45 degrees in a coordinate system that is two dimensional coordinate system then that line is having slope one and if the line is having less angle less than this one that if this is a line then its slope is less than one in this the difference in x will be greater than difference in y so difference in x will be more than difference in y if the line is less than 45 degrees its slope will be less than one and if you have a line that is greater than 45 degrees then its slope will be greater than one see the difference in x will be small right this this is the x1 and this is x2 this difference is small and this difference is more y difference is more x difference is very small so that's why this will have the slope greater than one because if the numerator is greater you will get the value greater than one right if the new denominator is greater you will get the value less than one so we are going to learn about Bresenham's algorithm for the lines that are having slope less than one and for slope greater than one also it can be written 
you can easily convert this algorithm into for line greater than one slope greater than one just as a matter of changing x and y values so this is about the line now next thing see this is our screen right monitor a monitor or the screen will have the collection of pixels so actually origin will be here and this will be the x-axis and this will be the y-axis downwards but for studying purpose we study everything in our world coordinate system world coordinate system is the coordinate system that we use on paper pen and paper when we draw something that coordinate system so in that coordinate system origin will be here so i am starting from one onwards right this is the first pixel onwards so origin is here so this is x-axis and this is y-axis so we'll study everything based on this one right based on this one then we transform it for the monitor or display devices so on monitor you will have collection of pixels these are the pixels now next important basic point see this is the line equation so any line in the coordinate system can be defined by this line equation and this is called as vector but this equation is not useful directly on the screen because screen is a collection of pixel so that is called as raster it is called as raster so if i have to draw this line here then i have to define it in terms of pixels let us say this pixel if you take this is defined in terms of 2 comma 3 and the next if i have to take this pixel that is 3 comma 4 so we have to define a line in the form of collection of pixels so from the formula to collection of pixels converting a vector into raster is called as rasterization so we have to draw a line means we have to rasterize a line now next we will learn one more important term so for that i'll remove this and i'll explain now how we get these points for a line from this equation see we have some slope we have some constant then what we don't know here is x and y values so from a single formula can you get two values no you cannot get two values you need two formulas but from single formula we want x value as well as y value then for that you have to sample one value sample means you have to put the value by yourself then you get another value so one value we have to take it by ourselves. then from one equation we can get only one value so which value i should assume we should assume this value x value why see we are trying to draw lines with slope less than one means x values will be more and y values will be less so these more values more number of values for example this x is 2 and this x2 is uh, 8 then we can sample this x value from 2 to 8 so for every x we will get the y value so that is called as sampling so let us take one line and sample it suppose i want to draw a line like this right line like this so from 2 to 8 so i want to draw a line from 2 to 8 with the y value as 3 suppose the line should be between these right i want the line between so for this line if i want to get all the pixels then this is 2 comma 3 the next x is 3 and for that y is again 3 only then 4 this is also 3 then this is also 3 this is also 3 this is also. see this line slope is actually 0 right i am not writing the formula the slope of this line is zero so when i'm sampling the x values x values are changing next every time i am getting x incremented but y is remaining same because slope is less than one so in this case we are sampling x values and getting y values so for all those lines whose angle is less than 45 degrees or slope is less than one we can sample x values and for the lines whose slope is greater than one we can sample y values and get x values so in this way we have more number of x we sample x if we have more number of y we sample y now by sampling if i draw a line with 45 degrees how it looks like let us see see if i have to draw a line from 1 comma 1 to 8 comma 8 this is the line right so i want to draw a line so i'll remove this i'll remove these points then if i draw a line a line goes like this so all these pixels will be cloned all these pixels will be cloned right and in this case now the important thing x values as many x values same number of y values so always x will also increment and y will also increment for the line having slope that is equal to one so just check it one comma one this is two comma two and this is three comma three and this is four comma four this is five comma five and this is six comma six so both x and y are increasing now let us take one line whose slope is less than one 
I'll draw it here. Suppose I want to draw a line from 2 comma 1 to 8 comma 3. So if I draw this line, it goes like this. Now the problem. See this. For this 2 x, x value as 2, y is 1. Then x value as 3, y value which one I should take. So you can see this line is going from partially from this pixel and this pixel also. Right. It is going from this also and this also. In this case, okay, it's going from here. It's going from here. Okay, I can take this pixel. I can take this pixel. I can take this pixel. But again here, partial is going from this pixel. Partial it's going from this pixel. Shall I take this pixel or this pixel? Now, same problem we are facing here. Shall I take this pixel or this pixel? Because partially it is in this block and it is in that block. So, if I show it here, it is going like this. It's going like this. So, it's going partially from this pixel also and this pixel also. So, whether I should take this pixel or this pixel, that is the problem. So, when we draw lines with slope less than 1, x will always be incrementing but y will not increment. So, if you see x is incrementing from 2 to 8, right, total it is 7 pixels. But y value from 1 to 3, so only 3 pixels. So, it's moving only 3. So, y will not increment always. So, whether to increment y or not, that's what the decision we have to take. So, these are the important things that I have explained you. These are the basics I told you. So, just let me repeat once more. The basics I told you, I have given you line equation. Then I said that the lines with slope equal to 1, less than 1 or greater than 1. Then I told you about rasterization, converting this into pixels. Then next thing I told you, sampling the values, right? Sampling the values I have told you. And the last thing I told you that for the line having slope equal to 1, both x and y will increase always. But for lines with slope less than 1, x will increase always but y may or may not increase because number of pixels in y are not equal. And when we are drawing a line, line is going through partially one pixel and partially another pixel. So these are the basic things that we have learned. Now let us go to the drawback of DD algorithm. Drawback of DD algorithm. So you should be knowing DD algorithm. I have written few steps here. See, we find out which values we should sample either x value or y value. It works for any type of line, right? For line with slope less than 1 or greater than 1, for all it works. So whichever value we should sample, we take the maximum of step. And here is the problem. See, we take the x increment value as difference in x by number of steps and y also divided by step. So division operation is used here. Division operation gives float results, float results, right? So, DD algorithm uses float. So, why it needs float? Why it is using float? On the screen, we have only integers. See, these pixels are all integers only. So, yes, it uses float because here we get the float value and for the pixels that we are unable to decide whether to take this one or this one, at that places, it gets some decimal values and it will round off those values. So, DD algorithm will round off those values. So finally, I can say that when there are no decimal values, only pixels are in integer form, why DDA is calculating float and why it is rounding off again and it is taking out that decimal part. So when it is not useful, why it is using float? This is the problem. So we want to avoid floats. So for that reason, Bresenham algorithm is designed to remove float because there are no floats on the screen. Now, next thing. What is the problem with the float? See, if you have integer values or if you have float values, then the processing time for float is more than the time taken for integers. For addition of floats or multiplication or division of float, whatever the operations you are performing upon float, the time taken for performing operations on float is more than integers. Now, why float requires more amount of time, you have to find out it by yourself, right? So, float processing takes more time. So, unnecessary we are generating float and again we are truncating it or rounding off the value. That is useless. In that, the time taken will be more. So, Bresenham algorithm is used. Now, what is the idea of Bresenham algorithm? We will discuss that and we will derive it. So, for that I will remove this one and I will use these pictures. Now, the idea behind Bresenham algorithm. So, we will see the idea based on which it is devised. See, I have shown you this line. 
this line is going through partially this pixel also this pixel also which pixels to take in DDA it will round off and take it so that's why it get a crooked line in DDA we don't get a smooth line but here we want to get a smooth line so we want to find out exactly which pixel we should take so when the line is going from this also this also means actually it's not going through one of the pixel it is going through bit in between the pixels so in between the pixel there is no space but when it is going partially over two pixels then we should believe that it is going from in between the pixels though there is no gap there on the screen so what we will try to imagine it so for that i have separated these two pixels and i am showing a gap here this is the gap there in real on the screen there is no gap but actual line is going from this gap so i have taken these four pixels these four pixels so these pixels with a gap in between them now from here i will draw a line see the line is going like this this is the line right so we believe that it is going from in between the pixels so the gap in between the pixels if you say this is one and this is two this is one and this is two so there is a gap in between 2 comma 1 and 2 comma 2 so that gap is there so when it is going through a gap we have to decide which pixel to take so we say that in Bresenem says that we should take the nearest pixel so how do you know the nearest pixel to that actual line see the actual point that line is giving is this one so this is actual x plus 1 xk plus 1 comma y for actual line so shall we take this one or this one so for that we will see how much it is away from this pixel and how much away it is from this pixel so we'll find out two values distance 1 and distance 2 so d1 is the distance from the actual point that we are getting to this pixel and the distance d2 is to the actual point to this pixel now whoever distance is less it is closer to whichever point we should take that one now from here our derivation starts for derivation we should keep few things in our mind first thing is we are presently on this pixel remember this this is x k and y k and every time x will increase by one so next x will be x k plus one and y whether it will increase or not that's what we have to decide means whether it remains y k only or it will become increment by one and it will become y k plus one so what will be next x every time x next will always be xk plus one but what will be y next y next can be either same yk or it may be yk plus one so that's what we have to decide whether we should keep yk as it is or increment it by one this is what the decision we have to take so once again i'll tell you we are on this pixel that is xk yk and we are calculating for this pixel that is xk plus one right we have to find out what is y whether to take this one or this one only so as per this line equation so if you find out this y value y value is m into xk plus one plus c this is the line equation which gives you the exact point here y value that will be in float but we want integer value so that i said we will be deciding based on the distance between this pixel to the line and this pixel to the line so that that is d1 and d2 so let us find out d1 and d2 so what is d1 distance 1 distance 1 is actual y minus yk actual y minus yk and distance 2 what is distance 2 yk plus 1 minus actual y yk plus 1 that is incremented value yk plus 1 yk plus 1 minus actual y value these are the distances d1 and d2 let us use this y value in this one so actual line y is this one right so let us put it here so this is y is m xk plus 1 plus c minus yk minus yk i have taken this one then what about this yk plus 1 as it is this is plus 1 whatever y is. suppose this is 5 so this is 6 5 plus 1 then minus y y is this one so minus this is y so that is m into xk plus 1 plus c this is in bracket 
minus on the whole expression. So if I open this bracket, then this also becomes minus. I have opened. So from here also, I will remove the bracket. So there is no need of bracket now. And this is all positive only. So now we have distance one and distance two. Now we want to know whichever is closer, we should take that pixel. So how to know? So if you subtract D1 and D2, then you can know which is smaller, which is greater. So if D1 minus D2, if it is less than zero, it means it is closer to this pixel. Means the distance one is a smaller. If D1 minus D2 is greater than zero, means this distance is smaller, D2 is a smaller. So this pixel is actual line point is closer to this pixel. So based on this difference of D1 and D2, we can decide which pixel to take. This means YK will be same only. And this means we should increment Y. We should take this pixel. So based on this, we can take decision. So now we can call this as decision parameter. So let us calculate D1 minus D2 and define a decision parameter. So first I will find out D1 minus D2. So I will subtract them and write the formula here. So this is D1, this is D1 and minus, minus, and this is D2, this is D2. Now I will open this bracket as this is minus sign. So I'll open this bracket and write on the expression once again. So here I have opened the bracket. This is minus YK minus one and this becomes plus and this becomes plus. So I have opened the bracket. Now if you observe M into XK plus one, M into XK plus one, two times, minus YK minus YK two times, plus C plus C two times. And this is minus one, just one time. So all these will be two times and this is minus one. I will write down then again by multiplying by two. So here I write the expression. So this is the final formula that is D1 minus D2. But in this formula, there is one problem. M is there. What is M? M is difference in Y by difference in X. Oh, again, this gives float result. Yes, we want to get rid from this float value. But still, this is having M that is float. So we should remove that float. How to remove that float? Remove this denominator. How I can remove that denominator? Multiply it by difference in x. If you multiply it by difference in x, that denominator will get cut off. So then same way, it will get multiplied with all. Same difference in x will multiply with all. So let us multiply both the side with a difference in x. So I'll remove this and I will write down this one. So if you want to copy, you can copy up to here. Pause the video and copy this one. So for this equation, I have multiplied both the side by dx, right? And here m, I have written it as dy by dx. So let us open this one, multiply that is difference in x with all, dx with all. So this will be dx d1 minus d2. Then this will be, if I multiply, this gets cancelled. This is 2 delta y, that is dx, xk plus 1. And this will be minus 2 delta x into yk plus 2 delta x into c minus delta x. So this is the expansion of this formula. Now still there is one bracket. Let us open that one also. So this is difference in x into d1 minus d2. And this is 2 delta y that is xk. And this one I will write on first minus 2 delta x y k and this portion I will write on that is 2 delta y into 1. So this is plus 2 delta y only and this is plus 2 delta x c minus delta x. So this is the equation we got. Let us call this equation as a decision variable. So we'll give a new name to this one. Let us call it as PK. This is a decision variable. So let us give a name that is PK. This is PK. And in this one, if you observe, this is a constant value. That is difference in Y. That is a difference in Y for a line and difference in X and constant. They all remain same. And which terms are dependent on XK and YK? Only two terms are dependent. So we can skip this portion of a formula and we can write pk as 2 delta y xk minus 2 delta x yk. This is the pk formula. 
as we are using this for taking a decision so this remains constant so constant will not have any effect on the decision so that's why we have removed it now this pk will be keep on changing we are talking about this pixel then again when we move to the next pixel again we need to take a decision so every time for every pixel we have to take a decision x is increasing every time whether to increase y or not we have to take a decision so for that this formula will tell if this pk value is less than 0 then this is the pixel we have to take if it is greater than 0 we have to take this one but for every pixel we need that one so we need to find out the decision parameter for the next pixel also and that will be for the next pixel so let us call it as pk plus 1 and this i will call it as 2 delta y x next next pixel and minus 2 delta x y k so that is y next y next as I said, x next is always xk plus 1 and y next we don't know whether it will be yk or yk plus 1. It will increment or not, we don't know. So I am calling it as next, right? And let us call this also as p next. So this will be the formula for next pixel. So as I said that we have to go on changing the decision variable for every pixel. So then how the change should be? So how this can be calculated? We can find out p next minus pk so if you subtract this then you can know how much a uh, decision variable should change every time so let us find out p next minus pk means that is next kp and the current p so let us subtract this we get the difference how much it should change every time so i will remove this and i will find out that one so how much a decision variable should change every time that is next p and the current p so subtract these two so i have subtracted these two formulas right so how i got this formula just instead of xk i wrote x next and yk y next i wrote that's all right difference in y and difference in x is as it is and these two formulas i am subtracting this is first one and this is the second one so now if i open the brackets and show you next step so here are the term after opening the bracket this is as it is this is as it is this is minus 2 delta x and y xk and this has became plus minus into minus plus so this is the expansion of this one now in this if you observe this is delta y and here also we have delta y and this is delta x this is delta x so let us take that common so by taking them common i will write on once again so this is the final formula that is the difference in the decision variable how we should modify decision variable every time this is the formula right so i have derived it from here so if you want to copy you can copy this one all these steps are required if you are writing an academics exam then you have to write on these steps now i will take this again and rewrite from here so i will remove everything i need only this one so this is the formula in this what is x next and y next already i told you see presently we are on this pixel when we say next x we definitely go to next that is increment x but when we say next y next y may increment y or may not increment y so we may have same y k or y may increment that is this should be plus one y should increase or it may be same so that's what I said. That's what we have to take a decision. So for that decision, this is a decision variable. So what I should write down in this one, if p next minus pk, if this is less than zero, if it is less than zero means we should remain on the same yk, then what this formula become? That is p next, I will call it as p next assign. Let us write down this portion here, pk plus what this should become we should take same yk so i will expand this one 2 delta y this will be xk plus 1 next s is xk plus 1 and minus xk minus xk then minus 2 delta x then what about this one yk as i said if it is less than 0 based on the decision variable it remains same only yk only yk minus yk yk minus yk now this is what we get so this gets cancelled and this term is gone so what is remaining so p next can be calculated every time by current pk plus 2 delta y and this xx gets cancelled and this is fun so this is the formula so next decision variable you can know it by using this one if it is less than zero and if 
इट इज ग्रेटर देन जीरो पी नेक्स्ट माइनस पी के इज ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू जीरो देन वॉट इट शुड बी पी नेक्स्ट शुड बी पी के ना आई विल ट्राइट दिस वन टू डेल्टा वाई and this will will be same only so it is 1 i will not write it and this is 2 delta x this one will be y k plus 1 so when you subtract these two one will be remaining so we also get 2 delta x so as it is so this is what the formula is so see here x next and y next one time i have placed y next as y k i got this answer this i got because i have kept y next as y k and this i got because i have taken y next as y k plus 1 i have not incremented y i have incremented y depending on the decision variable this is the value of a decision variable so this decision variable as we are calling it as p k let us call it as p k plus 1 and this also as p k plus 1 that is next p k so it is written like this mostly in the textbooks you find like this i was using the term next so that is easy to understand now we have two formulas this is one formula and this is another one two formulas this is if pk is pk is less than 0 and this if pk is greater than or equal to 0 we have these two formulas so that's all we have derived how the formulas that are used for taking decision whether to increment y or not to increment y now in this we have to do one more thing we should know what should be the initial value of pk so for that i will define what is the initial value of pk so first i will derive that one then we will be able to write on the algorithm so let us find out what should be the initial value of pk this is the incremental value we have found out right? when p is less than 0 use this formula otherwise use this formula incremental value we find out but initial value we will find out so i'll remove this and work out on initial value so for finding out the initial value of decision variable that is for the first pixel x1 y1 let us find out p1 that is initial value so that again we can follow this one for getting the next decision variable every time so for finding the initial value i have taken the same formula that is the first pk that we got and i said that this is constant and i have removed that one but now i will take that one also for finding the initial value so i will take the complete formula right now in this one let us make it for the first pixel so let us call this as p1 that is the initial value and let us call this as x1 instead of xk and this is y1 so form of delta y x1 delta x y1 delta y delta x c is there so that constant is there so let us remove that constant so how to remove that see for the first pixel in the line equation if i write this this is what we get so c is nothing but i can take it like this c is equals to y1 minus send this side m what is m delta x y by delta x so this is delta y by delta x and into x1 so in place of c let us write down this one and then simplify this one so i will write down this c value here and write the next formula so here i have substituted c value from this one that is y1 minus delta y by delta x into x1 i have substituted now let me open this one and write down this initial value once again if i open this one then this is 2 delta x into y1 minus 2 okay delta x into delta x gets cancelled so i'll get just delta y x1 minus delta x that is difference in x so this is the formula i got and in this formula if you observe 2 delta y x1 2 delta y x1 this is negative this is positive gets cancelled and minus 2 delta x y1 plus 2 delta x y1 these two gets cancelled so what is remaining now so only these two terms are remaining so let us write down p1 that is the initial value that is 2 delta y that is 2 delta y minus delta x that's it so i'll remove this this may be confusing see the formula is till here only 
So this is the derivation of initial value. So you have to derive initial value also. The important thing in initial value is you have to take the complete formula that you got the first time and C you have to substitute for the first pixel from this for equation you have to get it and substitute and simplify it. So now we have initial value of decision variable and the formula for incremental value also. Using that I will write down the algorithm. We can write down the algorithm. We will decide whether to take the same y or next y that is increment the y and we will put all the pixels. So let me write on Brissonnem's algorithm now. I will remove this. If you want, you can take a copy of this one, take a snapshot and go through it afterwards. So here I write Brissonnem's algorithm. We want x value. So x value should start from x1 and y value should start from y1. See, this is for slope less than one, right? If you want to check whether really slope is less than one or not, you have to check it. So I'm not checking that, just I'm writing how to put the pixels using that decision wheel. Then I will also find out difference in x. Difference in x is x2 minus x1. And in the same line, I will write down difference in y, that is y2 minus y1. So we need these local variables if you're writing it like a program. Then also I have to calculate p, that is decision variable that is 2 dx minus dy this is what we got initial value so this is what we have x y as well as p now we have to go on putting the pixels so using a while loop or for loop anything you can take and you can put the pixel so how long x is less than or equal to x2 because we'll be sampling x values then what to do every time first of all put the pixel put a pixel at x comma y this is what we have that is the first pixel then after putting the pixels x is incremented differently x is we are sampling so x will always increment now whether to increment y or not that depends on the decision variable if p is less than zero if it is less than zero then just we should calculate the new value of decision variable so simply calculate new value of decision variable that is p assign p plus see this p assign next p assign current p plus 2 delta y so this is 2 delta y else if it is greater than or equal to 0 then what we have to do find the next decision variable that is 2 delta y minus 2 delta x that is 2 delta y minus 2 delta x and also increment y so y should be incremented if it is greater than or equal to zero so this is in the else part so this is if part and this is the else part so this is Bresenheim algorithm right so simple so just you have to remember this one p initial value and this inside this formula and this formula right and y plus plus should be done here so this is simple this is simple only if you have to write on the algorithm just you have to write on these three lines you should remember then you can write on now i will take an example and i will show you how we can get the pixels using this algorithm now i have an example let us get all the points along the line so the lines first point is 1 comma 1 and the second point is 8 comma 5 i want to get all the points along the line using this personal algorithm which doesn't have any float value it works only on integers and this is for the line whose slope is less than one so if you check you will find the slope less than one now i will follow this algorithm so here i have written brisson m first step x assign x1 so i have a table here to get all the points so x assign x1 that is one then y assign y1 this is y1 this is x1 y1 right this is x1 y1 and this is x2 y2 so y1 is one next is difference in x let us find out difference in x that is x2 minus x1 that is 7 then find out difference in y that is dy is 5 minus 1 that is 4 then p p is how much 2 into dy minus dx so 2 into dy is 8 so 2 into 4 minus 7 this is 8 minus 7 that is equal to 1 so this is 1 p is 1 so i have the initial values now the first pixel is 1 comma 1 yes so let us trace this one while loop so this is while loop so first thing that we are doing is put the pixel so yes we'll put a pixel at 1 comma 1 then x plus plus x will become 2 definitely then next find out if p is less than 0 no p is not less than p is greater than 0 so then p 
P a sine P plus 2 dy minus dx. So that's what I have to find out. So let us calculate. We already know dy and dx. So let us find out how much this is 2 into dy minus 2 into dx. How much it is? 2 into 4 minus 2 into 7. So this will be 8 minus 14 is minus 6. So this will be minus 6. So P assign P plus minus 6. So 1 plus minus 6, this becomes minus 5. And next step is Y plus plus. So Y becomes 2. So here I have updated the value of P by following this one by adding minus 6. And also I have incremented Y. So this part we may be doing it more than one time. So you can find out how much it is and you can keep on adding that one every time. Now. Next pixel is 2 comma 2. Repeat again. Put pixel. Then x plus plus. X becomes 3. Then P is it less than 0? Yes. Then how much it is? P assign P plus 2 dy. So what is 2 dy? 2 dy is 2 into 4. That is 8. So add 8 to this one. So add 8. So it becomes how much? 3. So P became 3. Now what about the value of Y? This will not increment. It will not go into else part. So Y remains 2 only. So if you come back, put pixel. X value was incremented. Y value is still 2 only. Then next again. P is less than 0. No P is greater than 0. Else part. Change P by adding this much. How much it is? Minus 6. Add minus 6. So this becomes minus 3. And next step is what? Y plus plus. So Y becomes 3. And actually I did not change this one. X plus plus. X became 4. This I was supposed to do it here. Now repeat. Again it goes back here. Put pixel. This pixel is taken. Then X plus plus. X becomes 5. Then P is less than 0. Yes less than 0. Add 2 dy. How much is 2 dy? 8. Add 8 to this one. So this becomes 5. Then what about y? y is not changed. y remains 3 only. So it has not gone into else part. Then repeat. Put pixel. This one. x plus plus 6. So now I will be repeating it. This is 6. And this is greater than uh, 0. So this becomes how much? p is not less than 0. It is greater than or equal to 0. So this becomes uh, plus minus 6 is done. So it is minus 1. And this becomes 4. So these two steps. So minus 6 I have added. Then next step, put pixel, so this becomes 7. Now this is less than 0, so y will not increase. And as it is less than 0, only 8 is added to this one, so this becomes 7. Now next put pixel, this x becomes 8. And y, as this is greater than 0, y becomes 5. And this one, so this should be added, minus 6, so this is 1. Next time, put the pixel and get the next values, so that is of no use. One more turn it will take. Right? I am not writing the values. So it will put pixel 8 comma 5 then also calculate p value. So that's all. This, so these are the points along the line. Sometime in examination they ask us to generate the number of points or all the points uh, by using Bresnam's algorithm. So you should remember these things. If you remember these things how to get it. So you should remember the algorithm. Now derivation is also there. I have shown you derivation. So that's all in this video. You need to practice this one. You have to do it once by yourself then you can remember it. So if you just by watching, if you try to do it, you can't get it. You can't figure out. So you take pen and paper and go on following it. Now watch it again one more time and practice it and do it along with me. So that will help you and you can remember it always. It's not that difficult, right? Only mathematical part is more. So mathematics is a simple thing for the engineering students. So that's all in this video.